Guys, please let me tell you a quick story, a real quick one. So basically one day, yeah, I was just on the ground here, just waiting because I was trying to, I was going to meet someone. And tell me why, you know when I'm waiting? This woman just comes up to me with a rose. And I'm like, I'm so confused, but at the same time, I'm like, flabbergasted. Flabbergasted is not really the word to use, I just wanted to use it because it's a nice big word. But anyways, that's besides the point, let me carry on with the story. She comes up to me with a rose, yeah, and then she was like, here you go, have a, um, have a rose. Um, I hope you have a lovely day, da, da, da. And I was like, wow, no one's ever done that for me, like, thank you so much, you're such a nice human being. Moments later, she's just there standing there, I'm like, alright, cool, like, what do you want now? You gave me a rose, Hold on, finish, move. And then she was asking for one pound. And I was like, huh? What? I don't have any cash on me. I've got card, but why do you need one pound? And then she was like, just give me one pound. And I was like, hey, no, I'm not giving you one pound because I don't have one pound on me. Tell me why the woman takes the rose out my hand and she just takes it. She just snatched the rose right off me and she was like, you can't have the rose. Goes to the next person. And I really thought that I was special. And then I was really thinking like about life and like, what, what did I do wrong? Like, I've never hurt anyone in my life. But anyways, guys, if you guys see those people around in Central London or underground giving out roses and stuff like that, you are not special. I promise you, you're not, you're not special. You're only special if you've got one pound on you. And moral of the story, you are not special. It's special to me, though. Guys, is it just me or do you just love the smell of petrol? Because I know for a fact I'm not the only one and petrol just smells so delicious. I mean, if you don't like the smell of petrol, like, just grow up, man. Like, do you not ever just go to a petrol station just to smell petrol? Or when you're just filling up your car and you just like, you could just smell the petrol and you're just distracted by the petrol and it just smells so good. Like sometimes you just want to drink it, like just put it in a cup and just drink it. <laughs> Wait, please, I'm not advising anyone to drink petrol, just so you know. Active. With my Bengali friend today, Balasi, bye. Futkiha. Karabakh, it's the Barlego. What? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Come on, bro, ski. My name is Bengali. I look good in this, bro. Big man, ting. MashaAllah, Allah, my bad, it's a bad. Have you got Bengali girl on the TikTok? What's he talking about? Of course you do. By the way, guys, I'm already married. So, yeah. Just confirm with Mnak as well. He's getting married, married off. He's gone. Oh, he's gone. MashaAllah, brother. MashaAllah. Alhamdulillah. Guys, you know what's smaddy? Yeah? I'm going to be totally for real with you lot, yeah? Eid is not going to be the same. Eid hasn't been the same over the last few years. And do you know why? It's because the ones that kept the families together have sadly passed away. in the And like, even the adults are very immature nowadays. Like some didn't even see each other during Ramadan. Like, come on, bro. And Ramadan is the like the month where the most forgiving month where you can make lots of du'a and everything, and you don't want to meet your other family members because of a small problem that you had like last year. But one thing, yeah, I just wish that everyone can put their pride and their egos aside and just push that away, push that back, and just come together. But nah, man, you just want to hold that back and you want to be that big man. But trust me, you're gonna big man or big woman actually but trust me you're gonna regret that when you're on your deathbed like tomorrow's not promise you know what i'm trying to say anyways guys hope you have a blessed eid inshallah sorry i haven't been posting lately but i'll try to be back inshallah assalamu alaikum try to barbecue in what do you think i rate the barbecue wings oh, yeah try it quick 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 thing yeah hard Yo, guys, is it just me that can do this weird thing with, like, with my body? Wait, let me just show you real quick. And let me just give you like, a little warning before you you lot go like, Ugh, no way. So yeah, don't say that I didn't warn you. Like, you see my hands here, look. Three, two, one. Wait, and that's not the only thing. I might be Spider-Man as well, I can't lie. Like, bro, look. Pew, pew. It's a creepy crawly. <laughs> Uh, basically guys, I'm double jointed and yeah, I know that. Thank you very much, you smarty pants. Anyways, that's all I wanted to show you, but yeah, yeah, third piece. Have a nice day. Oh wait, I've done it wrong. <laughs> oh my god, guys, this is the funniest story time that I'm gonna do right now. I'm telling you this now, yeah. Some of you lot might find it funny, but some of you lot might not. So just grab your popcorn and enjoy this one, yeah. If it's not funny, please. Yeah, I'm sorry. But anyway, let's get started. Let's get straight to the point. Basically, yeah. This was during secondary school, yeah. I was doing DT for GCSEs. Bear in mind you, I failed DT or my work was outstanding. It just was a failed the exam, that's why. But anyway, that's besides the point. I think I ate something like at lunch that was off and I had a belly ache. Like bro, my belly was speaking to me, like it was spitting bars. And I had such a bad belly, I felt like I was going to do diarrhea, bro. Like no cap. Anyways, we were working in DT, yeah, and a lot of the students, we were like just messing around most of the time and our teacher was vexed. He was so vexed, yeah, he was not having nothing that day. And I started to like, hear my stomach rumble, bro. And like, it wasn't no ordinary rumble, this was like a rumble, like, it was growling at me. Like, you know them ones where you know that you need to bust a shit? Like, that shit is coming out, but whether you like it or not, it's safe. It's coming out your clock. Anyways, bro, my tummy was like rumbling so much, yeah. I felt 
the poo poo come down slowly. And I was like, as I felt it coming, I was like, so I need to go to the toilet. He was like, no. I was like, sir, please, I need to go to the toilet. And he was like, no, sit down and do your work. And I was like, so I continued yeah, for a little bit more, little bit more, continued with my work. And then at one point, bro, it was knocking. The shit was knocking on the door, basically. Bro, it was legit calling my name. Sada. And I was like, nah, safe. I ran out of the class, bro. I ran out of the class. I didn't even tell the teacher, bro. I ran out of the class. Bro, on the way, yeah, I was running, bro, through the corridors and everything like that. And I was just holding my bum. Like, under my trousers, I was just holding it. And everyone through the classroom was looking. Because, you know, the, there was, like, glasses and stuff. And I was just running, breezing, bro. And, bro, sadly, your boy didn't make it. Wallahi, your boy didn't make it. Man done the thing halfway. They even reached the toilet, bro. So I go to the toilet, yeah. I sit down. Look at my trousers. And it's peak. It's peak, bro. It was so peak. And that was so embarrassing for me. Because I had one more lesson to go, bro. And I would have went into the lesson, yeah. Stinking like absolute shite. Where am I going to change my trousers? And bro, there was no lot there. There was nothing to clean myself with. So, at this point, I was just deep in life. Like, what do I do, bro? I need a nappy or something to, like, wear underneath. Because I don't even know if that makes sense. But I couldn't even change my trousers. So, I'm not going to tell you, like, what happened next year. Run up this video, yeah, to as many likes as you can. And I'll try to tell you part two, if I'm brave enough. Yeah, third. Basically, guys, you know how the world's changing right now. Like, you got gay people, you got lesbians, you got transgender, or whatever. Bear in mind, guys, I don't have a problem with that, honestly. I don't have a problem with that. But if a gay guy tried moving to me, bro, I'll just cry. Like, I can't be asked for this anymore, like, especially at work. Anyways, that's besides the point. Basically, yeah, I was at work, yeah, seven customers. He, she, I say he, she, because I don't know, comes to me, and obviously I'm serving them. I have to say them, because again, I don't know. So obviously, I'm serving them, and I look close at the person's face. And I see bloody hair. So at that point, I clocked. It's a man. It has to be a man. Like, bro, you got full beard, basically. After I'm done serving, obviously, I got manners. I'm like, thank you, man. Thank you, sir. Have a nice day, whatever. Brother, whatever. I was like, thanks, brother. The thing looked at me in disgust. And I'm like, bro, don't look at me like that, please. I'm sorry. So I'm there just stuttering like, thank you, man. Bro, brother. Ma'am, have a nice one. Take care. Because basically, it was a man. Yeah, it was a man, but a transgender. A man being a woman. Do not blame me for calling you a man because I see the blood clot hair on your face. If you want to be a woman, please do your job properly, yeah? Do the thing properly. Shave the thing off. Khalas. Done. That's it. We don't have to do nothing. I wouldn't be having to call you sir, brother, or anything. More of the story, guys, yeah? When you're at work and you're serving people, from now on, I'm just going to say, mate. Thanks, mate. Or thank you. That's it. Khalas. Done. Oh, sir, madam. None of this. I'm sick and tired of this because I don't know who's who now. He, she, what is this? Anyways, bro. Yeah. What you're seeing, guys, is your boy's dance, and you're probably thinking, what is this guy doing waffling on the screen? And you are exactly right. I'm going to do a bit of waffling right now, but I'm going to be telling you one of the most embarrassing things that ever happened to me back in primary school. So basically, this is a quick story time, and I know I don't do this a lot, but why not? Let me just tell you, like, you get what I'm trying to say, you know what I'm saying? So you know how in primary school, yeah, we would always go on, like, swimming lessons? You get what I'm trying to say? Maybe Friday, Tuesday, I don't know what day it was, but for me, it was Tuesdays back in primary school. So we would go on these swimming lessons, and I was, like, proper pumped, but then when I got there, I was so shook. So obviously, us, man, we were getting chains and stuff like that. I was putting on my trunks, and I just clocked, like, these are a bit loose. And I was like, how am I going to swim in these? But now I was like, okay, cool. They got that string thing. Let me tighten it up. Bang. All good. Jumped in the pool. I was bare nervous. I never knew how to swim. And obviously, don't violate me now because obviously, I do know how to swim. So don't violate it, man. Yeah? If third, man's a professional swimmer out here now. You get what I'm trying to say? Man's Bengali, bro. You get what I'm trying to say? You know what I'm saying? So, anyways, that's besides the point. I jumped in the pool. I was trying to learn how to swim. I was paddling with floats, whatever, because I was so dead. But reminder, I do know how to swim now. So, man was in the pool just making sure my trunks are like tight because I was bare like overthinking like what if I lose my trunks so these trunks kept getting loose and loose and I kept tightening and tightening and tightening and I came to a point where the guy was like taking people individually like trying to teach them how to like float and swim properly from end to end and it was my turn so I was swimming and I was doing good blah 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 and the guy was actually kind of proud of me when I'm done yeah when I get to the end yeah of the pool yeah when I'm done I was thinking like I got to the end yeah let me just tighten up my trunks now but guess what man felt skin there was nothing there bro skin there was nothing there and at that point I was panicking bro like, man did not know what to do. Big man thing, but well, I did not know what to do at that point. My trunks had disappeared. I was butt naked. All the gal them, all the man them would have preed me if I jumped out of that pool right now at that minute. They would see my wonder. And at them days, bro, I was flat. And I still kind of am flat. But, bro, that's besides the point. Flat or no, big battle or what, bro? That's besides the point. I lost my trunks. And, bro, I did not know how to swim still then. And I was, like, proper shook. So at that point, yeah, I was like, you know what, man's going to fight my fear, yeah? I'm going to fight my fear. I'm going to dive down and find them. So your boy, yeah, dive down, yeah, like a submarine, bro. I'm finding these trunks, bro. I don't care if I die, bro. Like, my reputation matters to me. Like, I'm not jumping out. 
everyone was seeing much. And the guy kept screaming, get out of the pool, your time's up. What am I meant to say to him, bro? I lost my trunks. Are you mad? I was so embarrassed because everyone was watching me like, why is he not jumping out? And then, bro, eventually I dived and I see like black trunks and I just grabbed them, bro. And I'm just trying to put them on under the water. And I'm like, bear shock. And like, everyone's thinking, what is this? What's this guy doing? And bro, alhamdulillah, man, I patted the door. I jumped out the pool and with trunks and everything like that. And I was, that's when I fought my fear like, of learning how to swim. But yeah, that was a quick story. So guys, mom just came back from work, yeah? And she was like, oh, I know you're a little bit depressed. So let me cheer your mood up. And obviously next door to her workplace, there's Papa Jones in it, a pizza place. And the guy there always gives her discounts. So I walk into the kitchen and I see this. Like, yo, she already started eating it. Is she mad? After yesterday, I am not eating that. I'm sorry. I'm not eating that. Safe. Yeah. Ah, yo, it can't just be me. You're growing up, yeah? These sweets, let me show you. These jelly like sweets, like, were the one growing up. Like, you just open it. What? Okay, take two. I managed to open it. And just take a shot like that and do the same with the lychee one and the green one i think it's lime the lychee one's the best one i can't lie these ones are good too i'm just gonna suck this one because this one's kind of nice as well and of course you guys know my favorite oh lychee one you hear me almost dropped it mm. that's the best one lot Alright, cool. Let me do a quick story time with Zaza. Let me tell you a quick story, yeah? So both my parents, they work in a pharmacy, right? And sometimes you have all these nitties that sometimes come over, yeah, that get their like, medication and stuff. And some of them are just crackers, you get what I'm trying to say? And bear in mind, these, these guys are basically normal customers that come in and they get their medication, they're just crackers. So, so there's one customer rolls in here yeah, with a speaker. Like, bear in mind, this is a £100 speaker. You know what, let me show you right now. This Sony bluetooth speaker that's worth around 100 pound i've done my research on it i can't remember the full name but this certainly i don't know if you don't know the name but this speaker they came into the shop and they gave this to my dad for free so there i'm thinking like this guy here probably stole the speaker and just gave it to my dad i mean so i've basically i feel like i was sitting down with a stolen speaker like yo what going but who cares but we can listen to this she's on it so it's all good isn't it What are you doing? The azan is still going off. You're eating as well. What's wrong with you? Ah. Basically, guys, as you guys may know, from my other snack, I was eating um, ilishamas with like, you know, my onion, my mum, my onion. My mum made like buzzy, you get me? You mix it with the rice and you get a little bit of the fish, yeah? And then you eat it. What? Let me show you one thing. Ilishamas and eggs. This, look, this is fish egg, you get me? Let me show you, I'm gonna break it, watch. So basically this is the egg, look, look, uh, sweet, look. You see it, that's all, that's eggs, blood. You see that one little dot is one baby fish. And do you know how tasty Elisha Mas eggs are? Mmm, bro, wallahi, so pen. Alhamdulillah, that's all I'm gonna say. I did say this before I started, by the way, in my head. Yes, sir, you gonna try it? Yeah, so basically, my cat's doing up on Mazda right now. Let me show you. What are you telling me? Hey, what is that? Hey, no, no, no. You need to hunt that blood. Like, you're gonna kill that today. Attack it. Attack it. It's moving blood. Mimi, kill it. Kill it. Do something. And why are you running? Oh, 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 oh. Oh, there's beef. Mimi, do something. Why are you watching it? <laughs> hey, this guy's having. Okay, he's back up. Are you watching the guy blood two something? Oh, 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 Mimi! Ayo, having a spice attack. Okay, you didn't even help me. Rest in peace. Good night. Why didn't you do anything? Okay. <laughs>